everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching YouTube channel. Welcome to those of you who are new. Welcome back to those of you seasoned veterans of what we do around here. We get over 850 of these in the archive available. Would love to add more, and if there's something that you'd like to see covered, would love to be of assistance to you in covering topics that make sense to you and are workable for your benefit. The more you are capable of finding out, the easier it is navigate this crazy often crazy thing called life in any in any way uh, if you're looking for coaching on a variety of topics how to explain expand your mind get yourself a new mindset and all of that uh, the the couple ways to do that you can reach out through twitter at po perception you can reach out here on youtube through the about me section of this page and we can set up a way to work together for that the next the concept for today's audio is how to switch your mind. So the mind switch is the idea of realizing that your focus becomes your reality and then your focus create, create co-creates your perception which becomes your reality. So when you understand how to um, control focus and control perception, then you will, you will co-create the, the reality that you want. So understanding that the mind switch is a constant thing, which means that your emotional state has to be something that you're looking to uh, to regulate, something to look at, something to reflect upon regularly, and something to find ways to get through is important. If you are unwilling to change and or you are looking at life to ser serve a certain way of previous belief, then you will not get a new mindset continually. The willingness to have a better quality of life is directly related to the willingness to be flexible within one's mind, both internally and how you relate with others as well. Uh, the next thing is understanding tolerance. Now, tolerance does not mean agreement, and people often get confused in this area. Just because I tolerate something doesn't mean I agree with it. It also doesn't mean I have to like it. Tolerance just means the willingness to accept that people can have differing opinions without it directly having to affect you as a person. Unless something is directly dangerous to you as an individual, the need to express discontent or the need to express um, disagreement with a person is actually very limited. Unfortunately, we live in a trying to prove ourselves society much of the time, and thus we've become less tolerant over political issues, um, issues of orientation sexually, issues of um, religious nature, issues of how people should behave and, and beliefs. But the problem is the more vigilant you are about what you believe, the less tolerant you are. And so if you want a new mind, which allows you to have a better quality of life, creating a higher level of tolerance is a necessary part of that. Tolerance and agreement, though, do need to be, um, do need to be um, separate in that, you know, just because I tolerate something doesn't mean I agree with it, doesn't mean I endorse it. It just means that I understand that my desire for it to be different does not have to impact how I interact with other people or situations. Um, so that's important. The, the next thing is the ability to accept that new realities are possible. Many times, if we're raised in, for example, a cultic situation or a situation where um, intolerance is taught or a situation where very rigid and narrow moral and ethical beliefs are forced upon, to, forced upon us, thrust upon us, or led to us that we take on at an early age. The idea that a reality that of what we've believed for so long doesn't have to be truth or doesn't have to be a truth we any longer embrace can often be difficult for a number of reasons. The realization that we've lived at least a partial foundational lie can be very jarring and emotionally uncomfortable for people. So, the belief that a new reality is possible is the beginning of a healing process for many people. And then, the belief that a new reality can apply to us as individuals can also lead to relief and overwhelm at the same time. On the one hand, it can be relieving. relieving. I don't have to believe this way anymore. On the other hand, for a person who um, comes from a very strict family or very strict relational background, it can be overwhelming in so much as uh, there are challenges related to that whole concept of things and that becomes 
challenging from a, a completely different paradigm and, and completely different reality. In other words, realization that every belief is just a thought we keep thinking and that you can choose to think differently if you so choose doesn't necessarily mean that you have to understand everything that you're thinking or have answers to everything that you believe in the moment that beliefs and focus and perceptions can be ever-changing, ever-evolving things, and that we can choose what we do and don't believe, and that what we believe at one point and what we, what we learn through time can change and shift into new beliefs, new beliefs, new, new information it can be super valuable. So hopefully that is helpful. The next thing to consider when trying to gain a new mindset is um, understand that you're going to be upset about things, but your emotional state from a negative perspective doesn't have to be something you act upon. So having techniques of an understanding of how to self-soothe so that you don't act upon every negative emotion you have is one of the most important things you can do for yourself for a variety of reasons not limited to. Being able to be more tolerant also means having self-soothing exercises in a manner which is kind of on demand. In other words, you can connect to them quickly, but also you can have them in a way that you can um, relate to them and use them to calm yourself down before the need to respond. So often the need to respond to, to an emotional stimulus or uh, social, so, social stimulus is so vibrant within a person the expectation that they need to do so within a few hours, a few minutes, a few seconds sometimes can actually cause a chain of events and chain reaction that isn't good for anyone involved. So the ability to understand self-soothing and the ability to pull oneself out to do so is valuable, especially if we're trying to make new beliefs a part of our life. The next thing is understanding uh, the absence of judgment. Now, judgment and discernment are two different things. Um, we can discern whether something fits in, in our life and in, in what we believe or not on a continual basis. So I like this, I don't like that. That's a matter of preference. And discerning one's preferences is valuable. Judgment, though, is to say something is right or wrong, which then leads us to defend against what we believe is wrong and embrace completely what we think is right. The problem with judgment, though, is it creates a social divide and also creates separation from the power of creation and different social groups. So a person who's trying to have a more new mindset is going to be a person that understands the difference between discernment and judgment and beginning to connect with being more discerning and less judging over a period of time, days, months, weeks, or years. Um, so, and then the, the last thing in this is expression of emotion doesn't mean that it has to be agreed with. So you have the ability and the freedom to express any emotion you feel, provided it doesn't bring harm to another person unnecessarily. That being said, expression doesn't mean agreement and it doesn't guarantee agreement. And so the more we understand that agreement isn't a guarantee and the more we're not seeking agreement as a guarantee, the easier it is to have better qualities of relationships, both in the long and short run of things. So hopefully this is helpful. I encourage you to keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Until next time, everybody.